Good evening, everyone. I'm your commissioner, Larry Johnson, and I'm glad that you all are, are, are here uh, for us to have to launch this initiative to bring character to our bridges, to our gateway, because Candler Road is the gateway to South DeKalb, and it's very important. This is a pilot program. This is a pilot program. We're just starting it. Uh, I had a chance to talk to one of the best planning and sustainability programs in the world, and they said, Commissioner Johnson, if you can do anything in the world, hey, what would you do? Uh, and it was, and I said, I would like to do an art project, you know, because I get a chance, I got a chance to represent you all all over the, the nation. I was president of the National Association of Counties, and what that means is you get to rep represent 3,000 counties. Three, we got 3,065 counties across the nation. And so I was elected to be president for 300 million Americans. So in that role, in order to get elected, you gotta go from Alaska to all the way to Maine. And folks gotta vote for you, just like running for president of the United States. And so I had a chance to uh, see folks from North Dakota, South Dakota, but I had a few trips along the way. I had a chance to see about art. I had a chance to go to Miami-Dade County. You know, go to Miami-Dade County, they got one of the best mural programs in Miami that you will be able to see. Then I went to Portland, Oregon. And I was in Portland and I was seeing all, if we were the only ones had umbrellas. Everybody was walking around in the rain. There were three black guys in, in the suit and everybody walking around with no, and they said, we used to rain because they, you know, rain here stops us. Rain in Portland and Seattle is normal. It's like a sunny day. They out here walking and walking around and so I'm walking around watching people read, read Ayn Rand books and big books on the sidewalk. I said, what well, kind? And so, but we had a chance to visit the, the riverfront and the art. And I said, one day I would like to do some of that in, in our area. And so sure enough, when I plan in the sustainability, where are they? I plan in sustainability, folks. Okay, wait. wave your hand. Come on, y'all stand up. Because folks don't understand, people really think that the buildings, the restaurants, all those things happen by osmosis. No, everything that happens in your community is caused by zoning and planning. Those things are mapped out 25, 30 years before they happen. That's why if you look at, I took office in 2002, Candler Road, if you look at Candler Road back then, we had all of these little rental, we had all these auto sale shops in front of these houses. I don't know if y'all remember that. We had like five and six. I said, this doesn't represent the corridor because people were just building, putting anything they want on Candler Road. We had signs that were out of whack. We had, it was just a mixture. And I know that wasn't the character of the Candler Road that we were used to, but it took me, I want you to tell you, it took me about 10 years to finally get the zonings in place, to move those type of uh, facilities off of Candler Road and as you see, Candler Road is an overlay district, but an overlay district only works with new buildings. So if it's already built, we can't go in there and tell them how to change their buildings. They call what you call grandfathered in. The government cannot tell a person who owns something, all of a sudden, since I just changed the law, you have to do this. No, they, they have to, but anything that comes after that, guess what? We get to uh, dictate or prescribe them all of the architectural standards. And I said, well, the best example is the government needs to lead first. And so as you will see, if you look at the library, if you look at the senior center, it's all brick. If you look at the signs, the signs are the same height. They don't have signs all over the place. Uh, you look at the new McDonald's on the corner. Everything has to be that comes out the ground on Candler Road has to be brick. It has to have the proper signage. They have to have landscaping. All the landscaping has to be the same. It's sort of what you see in Peachtree City, and if you go by 285 Cascade, all of those are called overlay districts. And I had a chance to move some of those new buildings and make it happen. So with that happen, you see Mekura, Mekura, which is one of the FQHCs, is a federally qualified health center. Uh, anybody can go there. Uh, it's based on your, your wages. They have a dental, they have a, a full care doctor. But just across the street, we're getting a new Grady Health Clinic is moving into our community. It's going to have mental health, dentists, uh, primary care. But those are the things that happen 
as you get to go through planning to move that. And so fast forward today, we have this artscape. And you're going to hear from some excellent people. We got one of the best moderators in the world who grew up here in South DeKalb. And she's going to come up in her own way and tell us about where she is. But I just wanted you to know the gravity of what you all are here to do tonight is historic. This is a very historic moment. And we need everybody's input to make those things happen. Last story is I have Mr. Cook on the end right here. Uh, I've known him since he was uh, a yay hat to a duck. And I know, his grand, I know his grandmother, who lives right here at Candler and McAfee. His grandmother's instrumental because she helped me uh, create a park, which is right down on McAfee, uh, named after our fallen officers, Barker and Bryant. But we, that, the lake, it used to be called Lake Buena Vista. And there was some, it, you couldn't even go in the lake. You couldn't even do nothing around the lake. We had old cars that were down in the lake. So we had to dredge it, put out all the old stuff, and we built a brand new park and lake for the people in that community. So now they got a walking trail, they can fish, they got a gazebo, they can have jazz concerts. And the last thing I had to do is, as her county commissioner, she said, I want to have sidewalks from Candler and McAfee to walk to this lake. And we're getting it done. It took me 12 years, but you know, I tell people government takes a long time, but we got it done. And she's 84 years old. I still get the chance to go visit her, but to see her grandson at this table today, and he told me, Commissioner, I always want to do something on Candler Road. Shamley High School graduate, y'all. And if you ever look at some of his work, he's right there at Joseph E. Lowry at the Martyr Station. When it rains, his work shines. It doesn't come out until it rains. That's, how, that's the type of artist we got. And so I'm going to quit and say thank you all for coming. We will be recording uh, for people who can't make it tonight. Uh, we, have our, we have our Grammy Award winning uh, DC TV is here, and that's our county sta uh, television station who has won Grammys. And so they're one of the top in the nation. Give them a hand. And I got some of my little creatives that are in the room uh, from How Big Is Your Dream is here, uh, J Fly Group. Uh, he is, uh, he's part of, he started a group called Under 21. This is a collection of, of teens at under 21 right here in our the cab south the cab area and guess what they, they've been nominated for a grammy now that's big a grammy and so february 4th you'll see it on cbs we hope they can win and we just found out one of the young ladies is, is, uh, has uh, got an audition for the voice and then you got step stewart right there and he does Soulful Christmas and a lot of the things we got coming out. And a young man from his group is uh, playing Simba on Broadway. Isn't that something? So I just want you to know the talent that we have in South DeKalb. These are the things you're not going to see on the news. You're not going to see all that. But I'm going to tell it because we have a lot of talent, abilities, and gifts. So with that being said, I'm going to call up our multimedia personality, a District 3 native from Spring Valley, Columbia Drive, is Rashawn Ali, author, actor, philanthropist from Decatur, Georgia, where it's greater, a graduate of FAMU. Rashawn has done radio, television since 2002. Wow, same time I got on here. And led the host of TV's One Sister Circle. She's the founder of Sporty Girls, Inc., the Cool Soror podcast, brand Coach's Daughter Production Company. You can see her on the new series, All the Queen's Men. All, yeah, I may watch that. Okay, okay, I'll watch that. It's on BET Plus. We don't, we can't afford BET Plus. That's, that's extra, if it ain't on that little thing, I can't, it's hot. She's, it, she's an Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority uh, member, married to Brian Smith. They have two daughters, Bailey and Carter, and so I, I made a mistake, and not for me, but I sent this flyer to my daughter, and she did a dislike on it. And she liked everything her daddy does. And I forgot this is her birthday tonight. So I'm going to leave here, and I got to get ready for her birthday. So I'm, on, I'm staying for a minute, but she made sure uh, that her daddy can come to her birthday. But I want to call up Miss Ali to come up, and I want to get my little gift early. Uh, before I leave, 
uh, before I leave here. And this is for all of the speakers tonight. So I'm just going to give you all a nice little Bluetooth speaker on behalf of District 3. Thank you. Take it away. Thank you, Commissioner. Let's give it up for our Commissioner one more time. And um, again, I'm not going to reiterate what he said because he said pretty much everything. I love the fact that I am back home. My parents still live in Spring Valley. They actually brought me home from the hospital, Crawford Long, and brought me back to that house that they still live in. And praise God, uh, they are both still with us. So um, I'm grateful to be here tonight to moderate this uh, this beautiful panel. We've got some incredible people. I have a heart for artistry. I have a daughter who's an artist. And um, so I, I'm in this world as well. So thank you so much. So I'm gonna give you a brief, just a couple of sentences about our panelists tonight, and then we will get to the discussion um, first of all, thank you all for coming out tonight. Can we give you, I need y'all to give yourselves a round of applause. You can do better than that. That's great. And we have, I mean, all generations. I just met a, a beautiful young woman, 84 years young. Yes, she is here tonight. She's like, I live in the area. I was coming. So I'm so happy to have met her and to see all our young geniuses here as well. And like he said, greatness comes from this side of town, <laughs> I'm an example. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, our first panelist, and he, when I met him, he gave me his whole name, so clearly that is how he wants to be addressed. George F. Baker III, that's what he told me. Okay, okay. He's the artist and creative director of Foster Art Collective, also known as GFB3. Uh, he uses uh, instruments of design, illustration, and production, he employs a playful childlike spirit to engage the inner child we all have. There's always a child inside of us. We just gotta tap into it, all right? And next we have Rushini Thakori. Did I say it right? Come on! She's educated too. Community Engagement and Culture Program Director, Atlanta Regional Commission. Uh, she uses art to broaden an understanding of place, uncover histories, elevate voices, and expand a sense of belonging with the hope of reconstructing power. She uses her position and power to complicate, leverage, and advocate with people who have been marginalized to transform systems of oppression through political and community education and acts of resistance. That's a bad woman right there. Yes, give it up for her. And lastly, we heard a little bit about Derek Cook, Decatur-based multidisciplinary artist and creator. He's known as the junkyard chef. He's been creating ever since he was able to hold a pencil. His passion for creating started with color pencils and drawing, but as of 2020, he, had been, he has been exploring the creation of digital art. He believes that all the extra time he had on his hands in the beginning of that year led him to starting to practice his digital artistry. And I will let them continue as we continue to hear more about what they do and what this is going to do, or what this conversation and the implementation of art here in South DeKalb, uh, what it's going to look like and how it's going to feel. So we'll jump it right off. And uh, Rushini, I'm gonna ask you, how can public art be used to positively impact the community? What is it going to do? And we don't have, we have to share a mic, but or you can use your particulars. Okay. Can okay. y'all hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you how can public art be used to po positively impact the community? So there's also, there's already a lot of culture, there's already a lot of artistry in this room, right? Um, it's in coming up in different spaces, it's coming up in different places in the neighborhood. It could also be in public spaces. Thank you. Can you is this better? Okay. <laughs> and so, um, it can come in public spaces to really reflect all of the culture and art that is already here. That this is such a rich neighborhood already. Why not put it in public spaces? Um, it's it's a device to bring people together, obviously. But what are the things that there's like history here? You can put histor historical things up in public spaces. You can elevate the stories that are of this neighborhood 
And you can bring more of a sense of belonging because there's plenty of places and spaces in Atlanta and all over where maybe, I mean, I know that I don't feel like I belong everywhere. So how can you make this place your own? How can it build community? How can it reflect the values and the hopes and desires and bring more vitality into your neighborhood? I feel like that's the thing. And since I'm just like really grateful to be here and I'm very impressed by <laughs> all of the rich history and the culture here already. And I mean, I don't think y'all need us at all. Like <laughs> you can do it on your own. So yeah. In the same vein, like how can we, uh, what are some of the creative ways to actually infuse the art? So I will let you start and then I want um, Derek to, to chime in. Um, I always feel like uh, when it comes to trying to incorporate art into the things that we do, it's something that we kind of have to do at the beginning of the planning stages when it comes to whatever that we're doing. Um, it's something that, you know, it, you don't you don't ever want art to kind of feel tacked on to something that's already been completed. So you don't it, as an artist, it really it, it, it really sucks to not be at the start of things to actually, you know, creatively be talking about like, OK, well, you know, instead of me just slapping a, a piece of artwork on this wall, maybe I can talk with you about how to creatively engage some of the citizens that, that are actually here. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to actually work with um, with Midtown to kind of like develop some some bus stations uh, for Marta, and um, you know they had me helping them out with just like planning out the creative engagement of, of the community. And so I, at first they were like, "Oh yeah, we'll just do like a survey," and I was like, yeah, "Yeah, what if we do like a little coloring page, you know, so people can actually like draw out what their what their wishes and what their desires are." You know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, you know, art isn't just something where, you know, oh, I'm just going to paint a beautiful mural on the wall. It's a creative expression of the people and the desires that are already innately here. I'm like, art is just a pure reflection of what's what's actually already here in this in this community. So it could be something as simple as like, you know, hey, I have this mosaic idea or hey, I, I do woodworking and I would love to like probably place a sculpture here. Um, it, there's so many different ways that you can like engage, engage art with community development, um, with story development, and it really just kind of takes you having the courage to put your idea forward. So, yeah. And, and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback on that. You being, um, you know, from this community, a young man in this community, and you see these young people out here tonight, what would you say to them so that they feel like they have a piece of the growth of art in this in this uh, community? Uh, what up, everybody? Um, like she said, I literally grew up right down the street, so I would see this area almost a good portion of my life, and I would um, wonder what would it look like really to just have a whole bunch of art just like spread out um over there by glenwood it used to be this house that had like one of the only murals i've seen in the entire area and it got torn down and um that was kind of devastating so i was like uh, i want to do something major if i'm going to be an artist and i want to do it to Candler road so when this gallery cosmic nine actually called me um they're literally like a couple uh places down but I painted their first uh, walkway, and that was literally like one of the first things I've ever seen, like artistically on Keller Road. And so after that, I've seen other uh, art pieces kind of peeking up. So when it comes to art and just being a community, people really want to see themselves and their life uh, just displayed, maybe like in a really colorful way or more interactive. That way, they can feel like they've been a part of it. Like how cool would it be like on a random day to just be driving and you might not even be an artist, but your concept or your energy or your idea has something to do with like the visual of what you're seeing, whether it be a statue or like, you know, a coloring page or something like that you influenced uh, change into this area, if that is heard. Um, 
Yeah, I can. I'll definitely add on to that. Um, and I always feel like it's it's simply, especially for like a lot of the kids in here, it's it's a way to like you know y'all can actually get your your artwork on the wall too. I'm like, it really just takes being a little bit courageous and and saying, hey, I have this idea I want to put up on the wall and stack it up there, and then knowing that like that will end up affecting people people beyond you, you know. It's, it's really just, I'm like, really, if you just start with just one wall, make up art piece there, you'll be surprised by, like, who that actually influences, whether that's somebody in the community or whether that is another kid that's walking by and seeing, like, oh, man, it, it just took a little bit of, you know, bucket paint to paint this up on the wall. Maybe I can do that, too. I'm like, I feel like all of us here have kind of been influenced by things that we've seen in passing. And how great would it be to kind of have something here that can carry on for generations? So, yeah, I hope all kids in here can try to do that, too. So what would be the quickest way to, 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 to start um, to, you know, involve the community uh, in public art? What are some of the ideas? Like, how quickly can we accomplish? Russian, you want to jump on that? Yeah. I mean, there's, like I said, there's already great stuff that's already happening here. Just like change the location and make it public. Like, I think that's the, the quickest way because um, there have been, uh, let's say, kitchens that are having like really great feasts and things like that, but then like they would come out and do it in a market and that's a version of like public art. It's a pop-up, but then that could inspire some other kinds of art forms too. But yeah, there's already so much stuff that's happening. There's the, 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 the school, uh, <laughs> he just talked about it, the school that's going for a Grammy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah. program, yeah. Right. Are they on tour yet? Like are they should be going, you know, they should be doing public stuff already and performances and like, there's so many things that are already happening that how do you tap into your like your cultural assets already and just like put it in the public sphere. That's the easiest and quickest thing to do. Um, even as simple as like, we, we know a lot of the people that are already here in the community. It's as simple as going up to like a, a private business owner or a private uh, building owner and just asking him, hey, do you mind if I just use this wall to do a, a, a art piece? Um, it, like when I first started doing murals like six years ago, um, you know, nobody was contacting me. I ain't had no, no type of name, no clout, no nothing, nothing like that. So all I really did was just reach out to people. I would literally, I remember going up to this man who had this uh, big old, uh, <laughs> he had this big old tractor trailer in his yard that for years had nothing but graffiti and everything on it. And I've you know, been up and down that street for a lifetime. And so when I actually started doing murals, I went up and knocked on his door and asked him, hey, could, do you mind if I just paint a mural here? Um, and of course, he wanted me to sit down and talk to him because he was like 92. And I was you know, in there for like three hours learning the history of the West End, which was beautiful. You know, I, 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 I love the fact that, you know, he, he felt like I needed to know the history behind this, this area before I actually did something, you know, and I wanted to honor that as much as possible. And so he let me use the, the tractor trailer as a canvas for free. Um, and it really just starts as simply as that. I'm like, there's, there's numerous walls that are out here. And, and really the beautiful thing about Atlanta is that you don't really have to, and Sorry, but you don't really have to get uh, government approval when it comes to doing any type of pure public mural art as long as, the, as long as you get permission from the person that actually owns the building. So if you actually just want to start it there and, and just contact the people that are already around you, maybe even saying, hey, let's pull together like, you know, $200 to go get some paint. And then every single weekend we'll meet up and we'll actually go out there and and we'll, we'll do a, a quick design and something that's, you know, beautiful and reflects the community. You know, it, it will, you'll be surprised what those, like, little steps would, like, spark, you know, because that will only, like, shine a, a brighter light on, on, this act, on this community and it will show people on the outside of it, like, hey, well, shoot, what if we, what, what if we gave them $1,000? 
instead of them having to pull together 200? What if we gave them $2,000? What if we gave them $20,000 to actually bring a muralist down here and do a full scale piece for the community? So yeah, just spark it up. How many artists do we have in the, in, in the building? Don't be, don't be, raise them high. Yes, see, and of all ages, of all ages. So Derek, what would you, I mean, I want to know a little bit more about each of your background and like what you do um, and how you became the, the junkyard chef and digital artistry because your story clearly will inspire someone else as well. So I want to know a little bit more about you. All right, I'm glad you asked that question. All right, so anything that I do has to make sense. Like my heart has to be in it. Um, if my heart don't feel it, then obviously I'm not going to do it. And so that also comes to where the junkyard chef came into play. So my name is Derek Cook. I wanted to have something, you know, that could play on words with my name. But um, like I was explaining earlier, so we're going to imagine that we're in a junkyard and this junkyard is full of discarded car parts, you know, any type of object that typically will be thrown away. Um, it's useless to somebody else, but to you it's gold. And out of nowhere, you start to smell something very savory. Uh, and you peep around the corner and you see like this exposition uh, of the chef and they're cooking up something that looks very masterful. That's the type of world that I wanted to bring to myself, but then I figured like somebody else wanted to bring that you know, to reality as well. So that's where the junkyard chef comes into play. But then your mind, quote unquote, is a junkyard. And then you actually being the chef, you take these different thoughts, different ingredients, and you mix them together. So that's the, the type of art, you know, that I wanted to bring things that, you know, necessarily you wouldn't think of. But when you look at it, it's like, oh, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. You know, like stretching out your brain to the full limitations uh, is what really drives me. And I'm pretty sure uh, another artist can uh, definitely get some type of high off of that as well. So that's my art world. Nice. Okay, Rush, you look like you just tell us a little bit about like, what you do. And, I mean, I, I, obviously, I've read some of the uh, work that you do, but to just give them a little bit more to kind of explain your relationship to art. Sure. Um, so yeah, I'm at the ARC. I do community engagement and art. Um, I just uh, got into that role last spring. But before that, I grew up around here, not so far, Midway Road in Covington. Um, and my, I'm an immigrant kid. My family came over, and I was. They didn't want me to do art, but I was like, I always wanted to be an artist. And so I moved to New York City to do my art thing. I was able to go to school there. Um, and then I studied doing art in the public, where you're bringing the public back into public art. Because a lot of the artwork is like decided by maybe one man or one other person or a couple of people that don't even know anything about the community that it's going to be in. And so, um, I am now at the ARC knowing the, how public planning hasn't been, has harmed so many communities, has failed so many communities across the region, and how to use arts and culture in bringing the public back into public art. And so, that's why I'm just so happy y'all are here. <laughs> I hope you tell your friends about the survey and all of that. But yeah, I feel like um, Outside of the work that I do at ARC, I'm really interested in what um, collaborating with people, bringing people together, thinking about reimagining all the possibilities, um, because all of this was designed by somebody, right? And so it's all about world building and what we can really build together. So, yeah, yeah. A word. Um, <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Um, for me, I'm like, I've, I've been in Atlanta uh, pretty much since Nuck of You Buck came out, so 2003. Um, and, you know, went to Stevenson over on the east side, um, went to Tucker, uh, ended up actually going to Georgia State University, and I went there to study graphic design. Um, did that for a, a good little bit. I uh, fell out of love with doing logos, so please don't ask me if I do logos. <laughs> I don't do anymore. No, no, no. My uncle still thinks I does it. 
But um, I actually transitioned into uh, doing murals around six years ago. Um, and it was it was something that I never even planned of. I, I never was really even aware that that was an actual job. Of course, you know, we've all seen mural art and I was like, man, somebody just doing that for free. Uh, but then a, a friend of mine from uh, from college actually hit me up six years ago and asked me to paint a mural for him. Uh, he asked me if I want to do it. I was like, I've never done that before. He said, do you want to try? And so I said, yeah. And of course, as you know, we all do when we don't know something, I went to Google. And I looked up how to be a muralist on Google, I literally typed that in, and um, was kind of introduced to this wild world of creating public art for people. Uh, and it's something, fortunately, I've been able to do, um, what, full time, it's about to be five years in November. So yeah, yeah, I've been a full time artist. I've done more than like 30 murals all around Atlanta. Um, I've done, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> um, I've probably done near like 12 murals uh, around the United States and then two murals internationally in London. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've been able to like travel a little bit and, and learn a lot. Um, but most importantly, I've been able to like meet so many people that have just in, influenced the work that I do and, and given me such a passion to kind of create beautiful things for people and for everybody in this room. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> awesome, fantastic. I just wanted to get a little bit more background about you all. I know that we are talking about art in this area, but we need to know more about what you do. We are gonna open it up for a few minutes for questions. If you have any questions and the questions that I can't answer, Jen Price from Sycamore Consulting will, nope. And she said no. And then, I'm just, I'm just kidding, it's my best friend. She's also a product of this amazing county as well. Uh, but if you have any questions, no, no questions, a silly question, yes, go right ahead. How you doing? Um, my name is Rodney Daniel. I'm actually the chairman of the principal advisory committee over at Kelly Lake Elementary. And you guys are talking about getting the kids involved. And I actually have our art teacher here tonight, uh, Mr. Blackman, and he's actually is a muralist also. So my question is, can we get the students of the elementary school involved? Because I'm actually a 1979 graduate of Kelly Lake. So coming full circle, that's where I want to be at. I want our kids to be able to look back 20, 30 years and say, I participated in that mural. So how can we get our students at Kelly Lake involved? Um, well, I feel like one of the simplest ways is um, especially when it comes to like creating a mural, uh, really working with the muralist to try to figure out a way to do like, almost like a paint by number situation. I'm like, we, we've all done like coloring books and stuff like that. And so it's, it's really just kind of like blocking out the areas where like he would want the kids to kind of participate. I, I know when I've done it in the past, um, I'm normally, of course, keeping everything on the ground because no kids on ladders. No, 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 they, they may try, but no. Uh, but keeping keeping everything on the ground and keeping it as orderly as possible because I've been in situations where you know if you kind of give people a free reign to kind of do things, it can get a little crazy and could kind of cause like a little frustration. But having like very clear marked off areas of like okay, hey, blue is going to go in like the the B the the B marked shapes, you know, and yellow is going to go in these shapes and. Um, Trying to trying to get them to kind of like you know work with the paintbrush and, and getting used to you know whatever medium that they're using if they're using spray paint kind of like playing around with them and and making sure that whoever that artist is is just making sure to encourage them because some kids of course are going to be gun ho about it but other kids are going to be a little shy so you always have to convince them that there when it comes to paint there really is no mistakes because you can just paint over it. Um, so yeah, I would say trying to trying to get them involved in some type of community paint day on on you know some situation like that. So yeah. Um, another I, this, that's a great idea, and then I think another thing is um, to especially if you, if you have the art teacher here. <laughs> um, I've seen um, pieces, and I've worked with kids um, in Portland, Oregon. Um, where 
the there might be an idea or something by the muralist, but the kids actually did the sketches themselves, and then they were projected. So the scale was different. So it's the original drawing, but like ten feet high or something. And so that also gives a mark as the youth is like, maybe they have siblings, a brother or sister, and they're like, oh yeah, he did that or she did that. And then as they grow up, they can like um, to get their to get their own um, original artwork shown at that scale in the community. That's another way to like keep um, motivating and inspiring. Um, youth for those too. Yeah, y'all pretty much covered it. Like, what I'm thinking, not for real, because, like, if you want to do something with the children at the school to get them involved, like, just the pre planning, the pre sketch, like, just have them as involved with the beginning process as possible. So, by the time that it's implemented, for one, they had everything to do with, you know, the energy of the idea, even though we might be the artist that's putting it up. It's, um, it's a, you know, a nice collab between the children um, and the artists. But that's pretty much how we can get it started. Um, just a co cohesive organization um, between you know the, the school and then the artists and just set out a time, set out you know maybe a weekend or something. That'd be something fun for the children uh, to do. And that'll actually put some memories in their heads as well. But that can get started like yesterday. Yeah. Uh, hello, um, my name is Maurice Garland. I'm from Decatur, grew up on Glenwood, went to Redan, uh, ended up at Open Campus, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but um, I wanted to know um, how can, you know, the actual public get more involved in what's going up on the murals? Because, you know, I've lived in neighborhoods and seen times where a mural to end up and folks are like, bro, what is that? You know, or then sometimes, like, I remember I was staying, like, in, uh, like down at the bottom of Pryor Road down by Lakewood, and I remember there was this big controversy because the mural ended up on the, on the wall, and folks was like, bro, school children walk past this every day. A bus goes by here. Y'all got naked ladies on the wall. Who approved this? So I want to know, like, how can the public actually be more involved in the decision-making behind what goes up? Because some stuff I see, it looks good, but sometimes I'm like, dang, who will prove that? I would just like to know. I didn't get the email or the invite. That's an important question, and I think that's the purpose of us here tonight, right? So the purpose of this meeting is to set the vision for artwork on Candler Road. When you walked in, you got surveys, you got some interactive opportunities to give your feedback. There'll still be time tonight after the Q&A to do that. Um, there's an online platform for you to give your input, but that's why we're here, is to hear from you so that we can collectively craft this vision for what we want to see. And that's why Rashawn pointed this out. I think it's so beautiful that it's a multi-generational audience tonight. If anyone needs help filling out a survey, and because I, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to the little ones. I just, I want everyone's input tonight because it's really going to create a legacy for this community. And... After tonight, there will be another step in this process, which is when DeKalb County will then find an artist. You'll be involved in that part as well. So we really want this to be a collective endeavor. Um, this community, as we see you turn up because you care. And so put that down on paper, record it so that we can have a record of that. And then that can be the, the blueprint for how artwork looks on this corridor. Jen and um, her team, they've done a really incredible job with this and getting everybody like to, let, to get y'all here. And so yeah, it's gonna transfer over to DeKalb County. And so, um, cause it's gonna be a long process, right? And so it's like multi years, right? We're gonna have a big thing that happens this year, but um, there's gonna be, have to be from the county, very accessible um, entry points for people to stay involved. So evening meetings, childcare, food, all of these things are really great. And so to keep on, so you can keep everybody coming, making sure that the county can provide that too, so that it's as, as accessible as possible. And the next thing I'll add is that if you know someone who should be here tonight and they aren't and they couldn't make it, please make sure they know about how to get involved after tonight. Because it doesn't, 
Engagement does not stop here. The survey will be open until the 14th. Um, we'll put up on the screen how you can stay involved throughout the meeting, but we really want to hear from as many people as possible. Hey, um, I'm Steph Stewart, and I'm probably most proud of Camp Spotlight, which is my kids. I call them my kids because they're my kids. Um, but they're, um, I see them only in the summertime, but, and, they, and all of them don't live in this area, but we visit it, um, and I work in this area um, at the theater. However, um, is murals the only thing that we're talking about? because we are not that type of artist. We are performing artists. We want to see ourselves represented. We want to see maybe murals that have a backdrop where people can come and take a selfie. That would be a backdrop of a, a, a theater, a stage, whatever that may be. Maybe there is um, handprints where, you know, the Grauman's Chinese Theater. Why don't we have that on Candler Road? There's so many famous people from Decatur that can put their hands in the in the, the cement, and that could be a, a great thing. I'm full of ideas. Don't stop me when you're done, when you're ready. <laughs> but but I'm just trying to find ways that that where these young people would come up and say, "Hey, I want to see that." We've all seen murals with with afros with butterflies coming out of them. You know, all of that. There's got to be a point where we it switches over, switches over because they don't they don't come from, you know. That, that generation where we've seen things start to deteriorate and then it looks like the ghetto. And that we're trying to do the exact opposite here. And I love that this is here. I love that Commissioner put all of this stuff together because I am all about art. I live art, I breathe art, I am art. And, and, and I'm just one type of artist and I respect those. I cannot draw to save my life. That's not my talent. But I have other, other talents and I just wanna make sure that everybody gets represented. That's it. Well, one second. Let me put you on the recording. I got a dad voice sometimes, so but I don't have any kids. Um, I feel like even with what you do, it's not even just about doing murals in my eyes. I feel like artistry, no matter what it is, needs to be involved in this. So if if there is something to where like Either working with, even working with the muralist to be like, hey, do you mind if we do like a performance in front of it that we can record? Um, because the cool thing now with you know technology that we have, maybe that's something to where we can put a QR code at the bottom of of the actual mural that has like once you you know take a picture of it, it sends you to a link to where you can actually see the performance that you've done. You see what I'm saying? So, so that these, these things can go cross-platform so that the entire community can be involved in some type of way. You know, it, it, does, it, it shouldn't just be, oh, I'm gonna put this pretty picture up here. No, it needs to be something that's more meaningful, that means a lot to everybody here. So any type of idea can be utilized. So yeah, no, I appreciate that. I also, um, I really appreciate that and you, can, there's um, there's places where they've created squares, so there's like things that are um, public spaces that are more versatile, so that you can have a mural. It can be a street mural, it can be a wall mural, it can be um, these uh, stars or whatever embedded in the ground, and it can also be used for public pop-ups too. So I want y'all to dream big and see like what y'all can really come up with because you already have a lot of great ideas. We have time for about two more questions. I saw a couple hands here. Hi, my name is Emilio Ruler. I'm a community muralist too, so. But I'm, on, I'm here on behalf of How Big Is Your Dream, the under 21 oh. students. They are more of musicians. And I'm just, I love what he said because it's not just about the art and the murals. How can we bring those children who are dancers, who are music, who want to sing and play their instruments? And what I moved from Connecticut here, what we always did was we involve the community in making the decision for the mural. But at the end, we always had an unveiling, and we always had dancers, we had, we had musicians, we had all kinds of people during the unveiling. So there's another way to bring other art into that process. 
and I'm thinking, how do I bring this, being on the board of um, How Big Is Your Dream, how do I bring these musician children into more of even creating a different, expressing themselves other than singing and dancing? And I want to see how that can, you can pull them in because when you're creative on one side, somehow, sometimes it translates into other creativity ways. So we'll see how we can pull that all together. All right, we had another question here. Hello, my name is Jonelle Dawkins. I am the executive director at Scraplanta, and we are a nonprofit that inspires people to make art instead of waste. And what we see is a lot of people make um, artwork from things that aren't traditional art materials. And I want to know, like, as you make these public art, um, not just murals, but also sculptures, how can we incorporate different like found objects, like maybe bottle caps or things that are important to us, like the Coca-Cola cans, things like that? And how do we connect it with people who need those resources as well? I think that's some of what some of what Derek does. That's like his that's his expertise. So my understanding of the question is how you can take random objects and make it publicly appreciated. All right, um, you gotta have the heart for it. Just do it. I mean, like. If you are looking for permission to do anything in life, it probably won't get done. You just got to do it and allow the, the community, you got to do it with your heart. And when the community see that your heart is in it, then it'll open their brains up, you know, be like, oh, okay, cool, now I see what is going on. But if you're taking a bunch of random pieces and just putting it together and saying, hey, this is art, I mean, like, it's art to you, but it has to speak to more than just you. So I never, ever, uh, think about myself when I'm creating. I take myself completely out of the equation because it's not really about me. And that's how I have this ability to connect with other individuals. So if you do want to take something like a bottle cap or a Coke bottle, figure out how to make it meaning. Like Coca-Cola was founded in Atlanta, you know, so, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people will choose Coke over Pepsi. So it's like, you know, to figure out how to make that something heartfelt to you, but then also heartfelt to the uh, community. And then it was another question I was um, asked earlier, Mr. Step. I would like to uh, thank you. Uh, my sister, she was dancing in the hip hop uh, Christmas, and he was actually one of the first individuals to allow me to put some art piece on the stage. So that wasn't public art, but it was art in the public. Uh, they were having like a DJ scene, and I uh, drew something in the front of it. So that's also ways that the community can, you know, incorporate something that you're doing and passionate about, and having, you know, the whole area see it. So. You gotta have heart at the end of the day. I think that's a great way to end our evening. Um, before we go, I wanna give you some instructions about how you can continue to give your input tonight and beyond. Um, first of all, we heard a lot of artists. We saw a lot of hands go up of people who are actually artists. Please make sure you come up to this table and put some papers down. We want your contact info so we can keep in touch with you. Okay, whatever type of art you are engaged in, we would love to make sure we can keep in touch with you so that when we move to the next phase of the project, we can reach out to you specifically about being involved, okay? The second thing is we have um, surveys that you probably got when you walked in, as well as some engagement boards in the back. I know some of y'all had time to do that earlier before the meeting started, but we will be here until 7.30 to take your input. So please make sure you give us back your survey Give us your input on that board in the back. There's also those same boards are in that survey. So if you can't get back there to the board, it's okay. It's on the paper that you see. And if you have friends and neighbors and other folks who you wish could have been here tonight but they can't come, make sure you take a picture of the website. We're going to put it up on the screen to end the meeting. There's also some table signs around here that you can scan. There's QR codes on all of the boards in the back. This will take you directly to the survey and to the website where you can continue to give your input. Again, we're gonna be taking input until February 14th. So you have three more weeks to dream big, give us your input, and let's make Candler Road a beautiful canvas, right, for, for the art that we wanna see in our community. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Rashawn to close out, and thank you again for being here. Yes, can we give a Jen Price, a round of applause from Sycamore. Our outstanding artists who gave us so much of their love.
today, tonight. Thank you so much. Make sure you follow each of our artists uh, on the on the stage. We have their uh, Instagram or whatever whatever the at symbol is. Uh, but again, this meeting to reiterate what everyone was saying. This meeting is for everyone to be involved, and so please don't walk out without giving your input. We had so much great conversation from you know making sure that murals and, and, and sculpted art and all of these different things are in consideration once this project moves forward. And if we don't know what you want, then it won't even happen. So tonight is the first phase of that. So your input is important. The fact that you came out here on a Monday night and the temperature dropped, you know, we from the South, it's cold. Well, most of us are from the South. Um, it's cold outside to me. So the fact that you are so invested in your community that you want to see the greatness that it is that is South DeKalb, you should definitely um, give yourselves a round of applause for that. One more, one more, one more, one more. Come on, clap for yourself. Oh. Commissioner Johnson, it was so good. You, I, I hope you text your baby girl that you might be late. Come on and close us out, sir. Can we give it up for our outstanding commissioner, please? Oh, man. All I can say is wow. Everybody say wow. This is amazing. You've seen the local artists right here, uh, the cab, uh, born and raised, a couple of them here, Rashad Ali from the cab, Spring Valley. But please, you all, your input is so very important. I want everybody, this is an intergenerational experience that I want everybody to be part of. One of my things is I've always been a community builder, so I always wanted to build on the talents, abilities, and gifts of the people in the room. And if you look at any project we've done throughout the district, residents have had their hand inside, outside, around it to make sure that they have ownership. Because I'm not going to be here forever. We know I'm not going to be here forever. But that legacy, seeing Derek right there. Derek was with me when we were just walking the street doing town hall meetings. He was still developing his artistic creativity. It always was in him. And he was with his grandmother. We walking around trying to, how can we better Candler McAfee area? And he was soaking it up. He seen me get cussed out, everything. He was around all that. But I want you all to please get us the information. We need the artists because uh, we want to be, we don't want to be like the normal murals. This is an out of the box experience. So we want everybody at the table. I mean, this young lady sitting at my table, she's already in Drew this whole room 3D style at my table. And I said, that's the type of talents that we have in the room. So young people, I want you all to make sure your voices are heard, you at the table, fill out that form. We need you. Every generation is important to the legacy of Candler Rose. So thank you all tonight for coming. Uh, be safe. You have until February 14th. You know what for the 14th is, don't you? Valentine's Day. So show some love. Aww. All right. Thank y'all. Take it easy, y'all.